a baby elephant. So praise the Lord. That's on the first Sunday in September at our 1030 service. Now, because there's going to be a number of, um, shall we say, not yet believers here, what we're going to do that Sunday for one Sunday, because it's more fitting and appropriate when you've got non-Christians in the meeting, in the morning, that is going to be our gospel meeting that day. And we're going to preach the gospel and dedicate baby Alfie. And then our communion service will be in the evening on that Sunday, just for one Sunday. Um, because obviously, if you've got a lot of non-Christians here, you know, they haven't a clue what we're talking about when we're, you know, so we need to fit in in order to preach the gospel. That's the important thing. So that Sunday, it will be a gospel service in the morning and our communion service will be in the evening. Okay, uh, just for that particular uh, Sunday. But praise the Lord. All right, let's turn to Matthew's gospel this morning. A scripture really came onto my heart, has been mulling around in my mind for a little while now, but it's finding the right time to preach it. But I believe this morning is the time to preach it. And it's Matthew chapter 4, a very um, important passage, but one that you'll all be familiar with. I'm sure a simple passage, and um, but nevertheless, God, I believe, put a message on my heart for it. We'll start to read at verse 17. <coughs> From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for the gospel. Lord, I'm so glad that we can say with the Apostle Paul, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, that it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Lord, we thank you that in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Lord, as it is written in your word, the just shall live by faith. Lord, we thank you that the gospel reveals such a plan of salvation, that Christ died for the ungodly, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Lord, we ask you this morning that as your word is complained, that, Lord, there will be a word in season for each person gathered here. And, Lord, we pray that you will grant that desire within us to see others brought into the gospel net, into the kingdom of God. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name this morning, we'll all be edified, helped and blessed in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 
I want to bring to your attention those famous words in verse 19 this morning. Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You know, we can conclude this morning that right at the commencement of the ministry of the work of the disciples, that the Lord Jesus challenged them and the Lord revealed to them that part of their work, in fact, a very large part of the work, perhaps we could say the main aspect of their work was to catch or to win men, win people for the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He was teaching them that the great object and the great goal of the individual believer of the Christian minister and the church in general is that the main aim and the goal is to win people for the Lord. Now, it's interesting because if you turn over to Matthew chapter 28, you will see something at the conclusion that is very relevant to this idea that the Lord was teaching them and instructing his disciples that the chief aim and the main goal for the, their ministry was to win people for Christ. Look at verse 18. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, you've heard those words many times, the Great Commission. And it's interesting to note, folks, that those words spoken by our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was about to leave his disciples and ascend into heaven to his Father, before he went, he had a word for his disciples. And they were gathered with him on the mountain, and you'll notice part of the word that God gave his disciples on this occasion was go into all the world and preach the gospel. In other words, go to all nations, go to the ends of the earth, teaching the gospel, preaching the gospel, and people will be made disciples, followers of Jesus. Now, it's quite interesting that at the beginning of his ministry, at the beginning of the disciples' ministry, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And yet, at the end of Christ's ministry, just before he goes to heaven, he tells them that the main goal of their ministry is to win people for the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that in light of that, folks, that as a church, we must never lose sight of the main aim and goal of every individual Christian here this morning, Every Christian minister and every church is that the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to be fishers of men. Now, to illustrate that task, the Lord used a very sound illustration of the fishermen. Because for Peter and Andrew and James and John, that was their trade. That's what they were good at. They would go out on the fishing boats on Galilee, and there they'd cast out their nets. They'd bring in the fish. And so the Lord used that as an illustration for them to show them 
uh, that their task would be to win people for the Lord. And of course, there are so many similarities between fishing for fish and fishing for souls. You know, those fishermen had to be proactive. I'm going to show my age now, but I remember the old black and white television sets in a box. It was a big box. There was two knobs on it, one for the volume and the other to change the channel. There was only three channels in those days, BBC One, BBC Two, and ATV, <laughs> ATV. <laughs> Those were the channels. And I can remember my granddad, he would have a seat right beside the television because there was no remote control. So he would have a seat by the television so he could keep flicking through the three channels that was there. But, you know, there was an advertisement on the one time about two fishermen. I'm not sure whether they were by a river or whether they were by a lake. But one sat with the bait on the hook and he's casting out and he was sitting by the river and he was catching nothing. Now, the other comes along and I'm not quite sure how they did this. Um, so, but this is what happened on the advert. The other comes along and uh, he gets somehow, there's a large speaker somewhere and he puts it on the end of his line and throws it into the river and somehow an old record of Des O'Connor's or Tom O'Connor's comes on and suddenly, I don't know where he got his electric supply from, but all as the music played, all the fish started jumping into that big net by the lake. It was very humorous, but of course, you know as well as I, it's devoid of reality. Because you know, fish don't come to fishermen. The fisherman has to go where the fish are. And he has to engage in that act of fishing. And you know, so it is with us Christians. As believers, we must be proactive in seeking to spread the gospel to win people for the Lord Jesus Christ. We might also say the fishermen had a specific need. Peter, James, John and Andrew, if they didn't catch any fish, they had no livelihood. If they didn't catch the fish, they had nothing. And is it not true to say, folks, without the winning of souls for Jesus Christ, where is the church's hope of survival? One man used to pray, he said, Lord, it's not so much recycled Christians we need, it's soul salvation. And how true that is. Because, you know, the winning of souls is the church's hope of survival. Because, friends, it's time to come to a place where we win people for Jesus. So we must be proactive in seeking to win people. Because just as the fishermen had a specific need for their livelihood, the church has a specific need. I'm not talking about livelihood financially now I'm talking about to survive as a Christian church now the fishermen had definite means because Peter Andrew James and John they would mend the nets you know they would go down in the fishing boat then in Galilee they would let down the net that was the means by which they were going to catch the fish and if you read in Matthew 13 the Lord at the end of that chapter told a parable and he spoke about the net, the gospel net. And he likened the kingdom of heaven that was like a net, cast it into the sea. And when it was full, they drew it to shore and they brought with it all manner of fish. 
Now, folks, this morning, our net is the gospel. Our net is the good news of Jesus Christ that will win people to the Lord. Didn't Paul the Apostle say, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Christ died for our sins. That's the gospel. You know, Paul could say to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Friends, that's the message that wins people to Jesus Christ. That's the message. That's what we've been commanded to spread as fishermen for the Lord. Now, as I looked at that text, I noticed a number of striking lessons, simple lessons. And there are three things I want to share with you this morning. First of all, there's a great privilege in this text, a great privilege. Let's not miss the little words of the text. Notice the Lord said, follow me, and I will make you, 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 fishermen. I will make you fishers of men. You know, friends, what a privilege it is that the God of heaven would use people to bring others to himself. You know, folks, the Lord didn't have to use people. The Lord doesn't have to use people. But what a privilege it is that in his divine will, in his sovereign will, that he has so ordained that he uses people to bring other people to himself. Now, we might ask the question, who were these men that he would make fishers of men? Well, of course, they were Christian men. They were saved men. He's speaking primarily of Peter and Andrew in this verse. But if you read John's gospel and you read the first chapter and verses 35 to 41, listen to this. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is translated teacher, where are you saying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. It was about the 10th hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. You know, friends, it looks like in the days of that what we've just read, you know, Andrew went and found his brother, Simon Peter. And it looks like he told Peter that he'd found the Messiah. Now, on another occasion, the Lord, after walking by Galilee, sees them mending their nets and certainly working by their nets, casting their nets into the sea. And he said, follow me 
and I will make you fishers of men. So what did these men, once they'd started to follow Jesus, they were immediately thrusted out into service. We could maintain, too, that these were ordinary men, working class people. And, you know, I find it interesting that when the Lord would tell his disciples that they would become fishers of men, he didn't go to the temple and find the doctors of the law. He didn't go to find the Sadducees, the Pharisees, or the scribe. He came to ordinary blokes on the seashore. And these men referred to in the book of Acts as ignorant and unlearned men and frowned upon by some. Now, of course, Jesus does call well-educated people too, and thank God he does. But the point I'm making to you is this. Friends, you don't need letters as long as, I don't know what, coming out of your ears, you know, or for you to be a servant of the Lord. The Lord can, wants to use you. So often we leave it to other people. Oh, the Lord won't call me. Friends, you have a job to do. Naaman in the Old Testament, you know, he was captain of the host, wasn't he, of the king of Syria. Very responsible job. And yet he was diagnosed with leprosy and eventually came to find the prophet of the Lord. And uh, he was told to dip seven times in the Jordan River and God wonderfully healed him. But who was it that first uttered those words to Naaman that there was a God in heaven and a prophet in Israel? And he could be recovered of his leprosy. It was a little servant girl. Just a little servant girl. We don't even know her name. She was just a slave girl. And yet she spoke a word, you see, to that man about her Lord and about her God. And Naaman was converted to the Lord. You see, the Lord uses ordinary people. You know, friends, we don't have to have our name in lights for the Lord to use you or your own television channel. Friends, the Lord uses individuals. But they weren't only saved individuals and ordinary individuals. They were submissive men. And that's important. They were submissive to the Lord. You see, friends, it says here, Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Right away, they didn't put it off. But straight away, they left their nets and followed him. It was that spirit, if you like, of simple obedience to the Lord. What a privilege to be used of the Lord. You might say, well, how did the Lord use them? We'll turn back again to John 1, verses 40 and 41. One of the two who heard John speak was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah. Look at verse 44. Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter, Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, and then he told him. Friends, I want to say this. The Lord used these people in terms of personal evangelism. Andrew heard John speak. Then he went and found his own brother. He told his brother he brought him to Jesus. Philip found Nathaniel. Personal evangelism. These men weren't formally preaching at that time. They were just telling their brother, telling their friend. Friends, we all have brothers or sisters or relatives or friends or neighbours and people that we come into contact with. Friends, just sometimes in a personal way, in a quiet way, you say, well, I don't know how to start. Friends, I pray for opportunities and God opens doors. 
for you to talk and you know it's the right moment to talk. And just in a personal and quiet way, Andrew witnessed to someone else and that person was brought to the Lord. And yet if you turn over to Acts chapter 2, you'll see another way that souls were won to the Lord. Because personal evangelism worked, but also public preaching worked. Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And he, this was on the day of Pentecost. The disciples were full of the Holy Ghost. They were speaking in other tongues, in foreign languages, and they witnessed for Christ. The Jews didn't understand it, so Peter stood up to explain, and he began to explain, and he began to preach his first public sermon. And look what happened in verse 40. With many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. And then those who were gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. You know, recently, one young lady who comes here on a Sunday night at the moment, she gave her heart to the Lord. But, you know, prior to her ever coming to the Lord here, and even while she's been here, another lady in the congregation had been witnessing to her, had been talking to her, had been working on her. She prayed for her. She invited her to the gospel service. And eventually she came and at home one night after hearing the sermon on hell, she gave her heart to the Lord. One lady, not in this church, by the way, but a lady was, she, she was coming to the termination of a serious illness. And her children had gone to Sunday school for a number of years, but they'd stopped going when she was ill. And she pleaded with her husband two days before she died. She said, whatever you do, take the children back to Sunday school. And the husband did eventually take them back. But it meant that because he'd take them back to Sunday school, he had to stay at the church for the morning service. He wasn't a Christian. But, you know, week by week, He'd come along just to bring his children to Sunday school. Wasn't really interested in the service. But you know, God, by his Holy Spirit, started to work on that man. And it wasn't long before he gave his heart to the Lord. Eventually, his children came to the Lord and they became a wonderful family. You know, friends, that was through a dying woman. You know, you see how the Lord works? He works through people in a personal way and in a public way. What a great privilege it is to have a role in winning souls for Jesus. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Secondly, there's a great principle in this text. Because he says, follow me and I, I will make you. You see, as sincere and as zealous we are as believers, the underscoring fact is this, that you and I as believers in ourselves have no power to win others for the Lord. But it's the Lord Jesus that makes men and women successful in spreading the gospel. The Lord Jesus illustrated this on another occasion. In Luke's Gospel and in chapter 5, and um, at the chapter 5, I think, yeah, chapter 5, and in verse 10 at the end. Jesus 
said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch the men. You will catch men. But the Lord in that passage was teaching those disciples. If you read from verse 3, you'll realize that it was the Lord Jesus that had got into Simon's boat and asked him to put out from the land. And it was the Lord Jesus who was teaching the multitudes from the boat. When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. But Simon said to him, Master, we've toiled, or toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Now, remember, Simon Peter was the expert fisherman. If anybody knew how to fish, it was Simon Peter. He knew where to fish on the Sea of Galilee. He knew the best time to fish was at night. And yet it says here that he said to Jesus, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. He put in all the effort, humanly speaking, that one could ask him to do. He wasn't idle. He wasn't lazy in his task. And you know, friends, how often as God's people have we toiled and worked in the service of God to get people into the kingdom of God? And how often we have little or no growth and the net seems to come in empty. But notice, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. You see, the Lord commanded him, now you let down the net. And then they caught the fish so that it was so full it was breaking. The lesson of the Lord was to teach Simon Peter that it's the Lord that makes the soul winner. It's the Lord that enables the child of God to be effectual in his work and service. It's not by human effort. It's not by human persuasion. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit and the New Testament teaches. It's by the work of the spirit, the spirit working through the child of God that works conviction of sin. John chapter 16 from verse 7. I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage, Jesus said, that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. And then over in Acts chapter 1, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be my witnesses, and so on in Judea, Jerusalem, Judea. Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. But you see, the Lord was talking about the power of the Spirit and the workings of the Holy Spirit that makes the gospel powerful in people's lives. Hallelujah. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Luke 11 and verse 13 says these words. Let me just read to you. I want to back everything I'm saying with scripture. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Follow me. 
and I will make you fishers of men. One final thought. So we've got this great privilege to take the gospel. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. This great principle, I will make. And finally, the great promise. I will make you fishers. I will. It's a promise. You know, it's a wonderful thing in the gospel to study the I wills of Christ. When the Lord gives a promise, nothing can overthrow it. He declares, I will make you fishers of men. The Lord made that statement with regard to salvation. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He used it to his resurrection. I will rise again. He used it with regard to his people. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will never leave you or forsake you. He used it in the regard to the building of his church. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he used it with regard to his second coming. I will come again and receive you unto myself. And friends, when the Lord says, I will, you can be sure he will. Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Now look, folks, our time has gone this morning. But you read the early chapters of the book of Acts. You read in chapter four how the might of the Jewish institution of the Sanhedrin forbade the apostles to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. They threatened them with prison. They told them, don't preach anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. You read in Acts chapter 12 how the might and the power of the civil authorities threaten the disciples not to preach anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. James was put to death with the sword. Peter was threatened likewise. He was put in prison. And you have all the might of the religious institutions working against the people of God. All the might of the civil authorities and powers working against the church of Christ. But you see, Jesus has said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And friends, I tell you, an angel brought Peter out of prison. And they went on preaching. And thousands were saved. Because Jesus has said, I will. I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. I pray this morning that the Lord will make each one of his blood-bought people fishers. Amen. May we have a great catch. Hallelujah. Of souls. You know, time is short, friends. The days are getting evil. Nobody knows what's round the corner as far as the tickings of this world are concerned. But I tell you, Jesus said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Instead of singing a song, I've asked Robert to play for us a song which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. But it's a song that will help us this morning to think about what we've just been preaching about. The word, it'll be on the screen for you.